Hey percussionists, so while the rest of the band is dealing with how to clean out their instruments, we really don't have a lot that we have to worry about cleaning right now, but we do have a lot more when it comes to maintenance or keeping our instruments healthy. So I'm gonna walk you through the basics of what we need to start being responsible for right now. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we have the vibraphone here. We're gonna use this as our mallet. First thing we wanna do is always make sure we take the cover off very carefully. If we don't, we risk pulling up our bars and messing up the instrument. Good rule of thumb, just hold it over once and tuck it underneath the instrument. Don't put it where your feet are gonna go, put it under the instrument. It keeps you from stepping on it and everybody else in the band from stepping on it. Next thing is we talk about mallets and down here is a stick bag. They always go yarn or head down. The reason we do that is we don't want your body, if it hits the yarn, or if you grab it this way, we know that the yarn is very sensitive. It's yarn, it's thread, and it will break down. So we never ever wanna touch it. Biggest reason is because our hands have natural oils and chemicals in them that will break these down. And once this yarn breaks down, we have to rewrap them or we have to buy them again. And the mallet itself can last a very long time but the yarn we wanna keep living as long as we can. So if we have oils on our hand and they go on the mallets, those oils are gonna deposit on the instrument as well and we don't want that to happen. So we just put them head down, okay? So yes, you kinda of have to pull them out to find the matching color, but that's not a big deal. Next thing is the bars themselves. They're gonna be made of either metal or wood, depending on the instrument you're playing. And we don't wanna to touch these. Again, with the, with the metals, it's not as big a deal, but with the wooden ones like the xylophone and the marimba, your hand oils can start to pull up the varnish that's on that instrument and it's gonna to start to break down. So we want our instruments to live a long, healthy life. So the less we touch them, the better. Another thing for the health of your mallets, even though this is a lot of fun, it does two really bad things. Even though these are meant to play this instrument, when you're scraping back and forth, that's gonna mess up the bars. It's absolutely gonna break those down and it's not gonna be good. Also, it puts a lot of strain on this, on this yarn, so it's gonna break that yarn down even faster. And again, we want all of our percussion instruments to have a long, healthy lifespan. The one thing that we have specific specifically with our vibraphone is it is the only one of the mallets other than the big chimes that has a foot pedal and this foot pedal needs to be pretty close to the floor so that when we play with it we have a pretty fast action okay we don't want to have to like step all the way up and down to make it work the only problem with that is see how close it is to the ground now when we move the vibraphone we have to be absolutely careful that we lift the pedal up so that we do not damage it. And I'll show you the difference. This is pedal, pedal down. Up. Yes, it's an extra couple seconds and an extra step, but it is absolutely worth it to play this beautiful instrument and keep it, again, as healthy as long as we can. the mallets themselves, you can see that the bars are held up by a string. And that string is put in between these things that are called a node. And what those do is they elevate those bars from the frame so they don't hit. Sorry, I'm shaky. If they actually were resting on the frame, that black part that says musser, they wouldn't sound very good. They need to be elevated or we call it suspended. So the string is very important. We don't really wanna mess with the string. Um, if this breaks, you're gonna see all these bars fall down and it will sound really bad. So what I just tell my kids is just leave the string alone. This is how we tie it on the end. It is very tight, so just don't mess with it. But if you see that a string is fraying or has broken, just let me know and I can replace it pretty quickly. Actually, you can see the suspension of the string right there. And those strings actually go through the bars. There's a hole cut in it through the bar and that's why when we started playing, I told you to play over the resonator because that's where it sounds best. Oh, speaking of the resonators, have you looked under your mallets at all? See those little tubey guys? Those are called resonators. They basically resonate or make the sound last longer. We don't ever want to play with those. We don't want to hit mallets or sticks on them. They are very sensitive and once those get dented, our instrument is not going to sound good and trust me, you do not want to know how much those resonators cost to replace. That should do it for the basics of how to take care of your mallet instruments. 
in January when we start playing all the drums and all the other things, I'll show you that maintenance. But honestly, the mallets are the hardest to take care of. And as you can see, it's really not that bad at all. So I look forward to seeing everybody treating their instruments super well, like professionals in training.